Here's everything you need to know about the Ice and Fire mod within this vast new world filled with mythical creatures, crazy new weapons and armor, but most importantly, dragons. These can either be found dead or alive. If you find a dead dragon, its skeletal remains will lay on the ground and you will be able to loot them by right clicking onto them. With this, depending on the size of the dead dragon, you will receive a certain amount of dragon bones and a dragon skull. With these bones and wither bones, which are dropped from the wither skeletons, you are able to craft a dragon tools. These are pretty decent if you manage to get them early game, as they are of a higher quality than diamond. First off, we have the dragon bone flute which when played causes a tame dragon amphitheater and hippogriff to stop flying and fall down the flute can be crafted with an iron ingot and two dragon bones next but more importantly we have the dragon command staff this is a super useful tool that allows you to make your dragon stay wander and escort you it can also be used to set the home position of tamed creatures through shift right clicking. It can be crafted with any dragon skull and two sticks. Ice and Fire has three different types of dragons. The Fire Dragon, the Ice Dragon, and the Lightning Dragon. All dragons have five stages of growth starting from being tiny babies to growing into fierce giants. They also spawn in different biomes while Fire Dragons can usually be found in any biome that have a temperature above minus 0.5 degrees. Agree. Ice dragons are commonly found in snowy biomes such as tundras and lightning dragons mainly in jungle biomes. Stage 1-3 to three dragons can only be found on the surface in small roosts, while stage 4-5 to five dragons can only be found inside of dragon caves which are pretty rare to come across. As with any creature, dragons can also be of a male or female gender. This can be distinguished easily as females tend to have curvier horns than the male variant. All dragons will drop dragon scales, dragon heart, and dragon flesh. Unless you use a glass bottle on the corpse, you can get dragon blood instead. Dragon bones and skulls are always a guaranteed drop. The most important loot you can get from a dragon comes from their eggs, which are only acquirable from stage 4 to 5 female dragons, which can only be found in dragon caverns. The first dragon you're most likely to encounter is the fire dragon. These can appear in 4 different colors, red, green, yellow, and smoky black. They're always hostile and attack anything nearby. They are almost always always hungry and will search for animals to eat. These dragons use flame attacks and scorch blocks in the area. They usually reside near roofs that have gold and many chests. The best way to fight the fire dragon is to acquire potions of fire resistance and fight dragons in long range fights using either a bow or a crossbow. Bringing lots of food and golden apples for regeneration is always a plus. After defeating fire dragons you should be able to craft yourself dragon scale armor and from acquiring dragon blood you can upgrade your dragon bone sword into a dragon blood sword. Next on our list are ice dragons, which are much rarer to find as they only spawn in cold biomes. To successfully defeat one, I recommend bringing milk buckets, potions of regeneration, potions of weakness, and the strongest weapons and armors available to you in the current time. Bows are a must against these dragons. Remember, hitting a dragon's tail or head does extra damage to it. Dragon fluke can also be used to make dragons go onto the ground, which can make the fight a lot easier. Next and probably the toughest dragon are the lightning dragons. They can only be found in the savanna, jungle, and badlands biomes. The unique thing about lightning dragons is that they will sleep during the day and become active during the night, which makes them nocturnal. Make sure you have enchanted armor for extra protection before fighting lightning dragons, as their breath is deadliest of all three dragons. Potions of regeneration and items such as golden apples are essential to defeat them. It is worthwhile to look for a dragon cavern to try obtain a dragon egg. You need to have an element of luck however as the dragon you need to kill must be female to drop the dragon egg. These dragons are usually stage 4 to 5 and when defeated will drop dragon eggs which can be used to tame your very own dragon. Each type of egg requires a different method to be hatched. Fire dragon eggs need to be lit up in flames in order to hatch while ice dragon eggs need to be submerged in water and lightning eggs have to be left out in the rain. Once a dragon is hatched it will automatically be tamed and will always start off as a stage 
one dragon. The dragon can be leveled up however using the dragon meal or even being near it passively levels it up. Once the dragon reaches stage 3 of growth you will be able to ride on it and use the dragon's breath and bite attacks. If it is stage 1 or 2 however you can only put it on your shoulder. In order to check your dragon stats simply interact with the dragon while sneaking and you can also equip your dragon with armor to make it more enduring for fights. With having a tame dragon you can proceed to power up a dragon forge. Dragon forges are made of dragon steel ingots of its type using bottles of dragon blood and iron ingots. A stage plus 3 dragon will automatically breathe its breath when near a fully completed dragon forge. This also works with wild dragons however it is more recommended to use a tamed one for obvious reasons. Note that the dragon forge isn't a single block but rather a 3x3 three three build of blocks. You must use its corresponding elements so for example if you're using lightning dragon use lightning blood. Alongside dragons the ice and fire mod includes a few mini bosses that you should consider fighting. These include the gorgon, cyclops and the hydra. Let's start off with the cyclops. The cyclops is a boss that tends to flock the sheep inside large stony coves however they can also rarely spawn in plains and savanna biomes. As the name suggests the cyclops only has one eye. Upon death they can drop raw mutton, leather, blocks of wool and they have a 50% chance of dropping the eye of cyclops. The eye of cyclops is a legendary weapon and when held it provides weakness to debuff to nearby hostile mobs. The cyclops is always hostile and it is recommended to fight him with a bow. Also a pro tip is to shoot an arrow into his eye as this can cause blindness and make him unable to see you making it a much easier fight. There is also another option to wear sheep disguise armor and seek around the cyclops however hitting any sheep near cyclopses will remove the disguise effect. Next up we have the gorgons but as I would call them the medusa boss. They lurk in coastal underground lairs. Out of the three bosses the gorgon has the least amount of drops as they only drop the gorgon head upon death. Gorgon head being a one time use item that can turn one mob of your choice into a statue. If you look directly at the gorgon her eyes will start glowing and she will turn you into stone. In order to avoid this effect one must craft a blindfold and wear it during the battle. Blindfolds can be crafted with two strings and leather. There are two main ways of defeating the Gorgon. The first is to wear a blindfold, equip good armor, and use a powerful sword. It's also recommended to carry milk buckets to nullify her poison effects. The second approach is a bit riskier but also viable, but you can take on the Gorgon without a blindfold simply by looking down and hitting her tail. However, you must be careful to not get petrified. Our last mini boss is the Hydra. In my opinion, this is the hardest out of the three. The Hydra is a snake with multiple heads. They spawn in hydra layers which can be found in swamp biomes. They drop hydra fangs, rotten flesh, have a 10% chance for a hydra heart and 2.5% chance for a hydra skull. The hydra heart is a legendary weapon that when equipped in the hotbar it gives increasing regeneration based on how injured you are. When fighting a hydra you need to keep in mind it can regenerate its heads and we prevent this by causing fire damage. However if you don't keep it constantly on fire it can regenerate up to a maximum of 9 heads. The best way to defeat it is by having either fire dragon steel sword or flame dragon bone sword or anything with fire aspect on it. Alternatively, you can use the flaming bow. Make sure to keep the hydra on ground in clear weather as water prevents it from being on fire which will allow it to regen its head. Make sure to sprint away from its jaw strikes and repeat this until it dies. While exploring the desert or jungle lands you may stumble upon a hive looking structure. Within these you will find creatures called mermexes. Now other than their ugly looks, Mermexes have a hidden use that can benefit the player. You see, like bees, within a Mermex hive you can find five different types of Mermexes. These include workers, soldiers, sentinels, royals, and queens. Each of these will perform different tasks around the hive. Upon death, Mermex will drop chitin, resin chunks, and stingers. It's important to note that if you kill the queen of the hive, as there is only one, it will crumble the whole colony, so be careful. You're probably thinking to yourself, why is he talking about the Mermex? Well, you are actually able to gain a reputation with the Mermex. The Mermex are hostile at first and the only way to raise reputation with a Mermex hive is to throw resin chunks near a worker. They have to be ones corresponding to the Mermex. The minimum reputation is 0 and max is 100. Here is a graph to display how the reputation system works. Once you reach a reputation of 25 all Mermex in the hive turn neutral and once you reach a reputation of 50 all Mermex will be willing to trade. Trading with them works in the same way it would with a villager. Instead of emeralds though they will require resin. Once you reach a reputation of 75, you are able to control the hive using a Mermex staff. In order to use the staff, you must interact with a Mermex with the staff, and from then on, you can use it to delete certain.
certain rooms within the hive, as well as disable the queen's reproductive abilities. By sneaking and using the staff, you are also able to add new rooms into the hive. Alright, let's talk about what other mobs you can encounter in this mod. Pixies can be found in tiny woodland villages, which predominantly appear in the dark forest biome. There are five different types of pixies, and each come with a unique ability once tamed by a player. They drop pixie dust and have a 2.5% chance to drop pixie wing. The pixie wing can be used to craft the pixie staff, which allows you to consume pixie dust to fire projectiles that do low damage but lift enemies into the air. Pixies are passive mobs, however if you are nearby them, they tend to fly up to you and steal a random stackable item from your inventory. In order to catch a pixie, you must have a jar in your hand and interact with the pixie. You may then place this jar and as soon as the pixie sits down, collect pixie dust from them. Pixies can be tamed using a cake, just drop a cake near them and they will eat it and become your friend. As mentioned before, befriended pixies actually give a passive status effect to the player. This can include strength, jump boost, speed, luck and haste. The hippocampi are aquatic creatures that can be tamed and ridden. They are pretty much an underwater horse. These mobs are also passive and mainly found swimming around in oceans or deep ocean biomes. When killed, they will drop shiny scales and have a 2.5% chance to drop a hippocampus fin. This can be used to craft the hippocampus slapper, which has the same attack speed as a sword but only deals 2 damage per attack. In addition other to this, it will apply nausea 2 and slowness 2 to its target. Hippocampi are attracted by players holding kelp, which is used to tame them, but you can use sponges if you're feeling fancy. Unlike other mobs, while it is tamed, the hippocampi will continue to move around, so make sure to enclose her or bring a lead to make sure it doesn't get away. Tamed hippocampi can be saddled, carry chests, and be equipped with armor. While riding the hippocampi, it will swim up or down depending on where the player is looking. Spacebar makes the hippocampi jump if it's on dry land. Hippocampi are faster than boats and sea serpents and also allow you to breathe underwater. A hidden fact not many people know is that when you name a hippocampi rainbow the same way you name a sheep jeb underscore, it will make their color change. Let's introduce our first neutral mob which is the hippogriff. Hippogriffs can be tamed and ridden. They are a mix of a horse and an eagle. They will drop feathers, leather and have a 2.5% chance to drop hippogriff talons and skull. The talon can be used to make the hippogriff talon sword which deals extra damage while in the main hand. These mobs are usually neutral unless provoked. However, if they are hungry they will attack you. They can be tamed using rabbit feet, just drop 8 rabbit feet near it and it will eat the treats and begin to tame by itself. Domesticated hippogriffs can be saddled, carry chests and be equipped with armor. They can also be made to wander or sit by interacting with them while holding a stick. Sneaking while interacting with a hippogriff with a stick or a dragon command staff will set a home position where it currently is. In order to breed two hippogriffs they can be fed with rabbit stew and then they will produce an egg. Amphitheers are mystical feather serpents that can be found in the jungle. They come in five different colors and upon death they drop amphitheer feathers and have a 2.5% chance of dropping their skull. The feathers can be used to make the amphitheer makuhutu? I don't know how it's pronounced. Which is a legendary weapon that knocks back entities up and back and disables shields. Amphitheers are also neutral mobs so try not to annoy them. Taming one of them is a bit of a task as they are pretty swift. You must interact with one on an empty hand. Once you mount an amphitheer it will repeatedly turn its head over its side to bite you. You have to survive these bites in order to tame it. Like with any other tameable mob you can control what the amphitheer does. It's important to remember that feeding it cocoa beans will heal it. You can breathe amphitheers together using cookies. Sirens can be found at seaside rocky islands. They initially take an appearance of a maid and will draw you in with their beautiful voice. However, once you are close enough to them, they will reveal their true form and they will proceed to attack you turning into nagas. Upon death, sirens drop shiny scales, prismarine shards and prismarine crystals and have a 2.5% chance to drop a siren tier. The siren tier is used in the crafting of a siren flu, it makes most nearby mobs temporarily fall in love with you and they become passive for 10 seconds. While the shiny scales are used to craft tide guardian armor, there is a way to nullify the siren's singing effect and it is by crafting earplugs. If you have them equipped, you can become immune to their singing. While exploring the desert lands, you may find death worms within them. They are giant worms that traverse these lands and are always hostile. Upon death, they drop death worm chitin, rotten flesh, death worm egg, and have a 2.5% chance of dropping a death worm tongue, which 
is used to craft the Death Room Gauntlet. This weapon lashes at a target with its tongue and pulls them towards you, while the Death Room's chitin is also used to make the Death Room chitin armor. A funny thing you could try with the Death Rooms is dropping a TNT near a Death Room. It will eat the TNT only to explode and die a few seconds later. The only way to tame a Death Room is through their eggs. Upon hatching, the Death Room will start out tiny and patrol the area it spawned in within a 50 block radius. It is also possible to mount Death Rooms while having two fishing rods in your hands, however according to the wiki it is not recommended as it can break your world. And now we have the cockatrice, and oh boy they look like a chicken straight out of hell. Cockatrices are mainly found in savannas and sap the life out of anything that looks at them. Baby cockatrices can be hatched by throwing rotten egg, which can rarely be obtained from chickens. Upon death, cockatrices drop feathers, raw chicken, cooked chicken, wither bones, and have a 2.5% chance of dropping cockatrice eye and their skull. The eye is used to craft the cockatrice scepter, which can wither targets. Cockatrices are naturally hostile, and if one of them is looking directly at you, it will fire a beam from its eyes that inflicts slowness, nausea, and wither effects. Wearing a blindfold can nullify this the same way as fighting with a gorgon. A thing not many people know is that cockatrices will actually protect any chickens they come across. In order to tame a cockatrice, you must survive looking at its eyes long enough before it breaks. Stymphalian birds are carnivorous birds that guard the swampy environments and fire metallic feathers. Upon death, they will drop stymphalian feathers, iron ingots, iron nuggets, copper ingots, copper nuggets, and have a 2.5% chance for their skull. These birds are hostile and usually spawn in groups. They are able to spot targets from very far away. It is suggested to wear troll leather armor fighting them as it has projectile protection. Trolls are beasts that hide in caves and are a danger to those looking for ores. They come in three different appearances depending on the biome. They will typically spawn in deep underground, in forests, mountains, and snowy tundra biomes. The loot from trolls depends on what kind of troll it is and what weapon it is holding. All of them will drop troll tusks and troll leather and they have a 2.5% chance to drop their skull. They have a chance to drop the weapon they are holding which can be any of the following. Trolls are hostile mobs so once it sees you it will let out a loud roar and come rushing at you. If a troll is exposed directly to sunlight it will turn into stone. Since arrows are ineffective against them it is recommended to bring decent armor and carry a hard hitting melee weapon. Sea serpents can be found in ocean and deep ocean biomes. They take the appearance of a sort of serpent dragon. Upon death, they drop sea serpent scales, sea serpent fangs, and a 2.5% chance to drop their skull. The sea serpent scales can be used to make tide guardian armor and tide arrows. However, the sea serpent fangs can be used to make the tide trident, which is a strong weapon that can pierce through multiple enemies. It can be charged and thrown much like the vanilla trident. Sea serpents are hostile mobs and will attack you on sight. It is advised to bring good melee weapon and ride an armored hippocampi to fight them. Ghosts haunt their burial places at night. They can be found in graveyards, which can also be one of the first things you see when spawning in. They will rise out of the graveyard soil during the night and they will spawn when a cursed chest hidden in a small catacomb is opened. Upon death, they drop ectoplasm and have a 2.5% chance of dropping a phantasmal ingot. Ectoplasm is used for crafting cursed chests and graveyard soil. The ingot, however, is used to combine a dragon bone sword to make the phantasmal blade. This blade does 11 damage and can throw ghost blades that pass through blocks and damage mobs by left clicking. Ghosts are hostile creatures and have the ability to spot targets from afar. They are able to fly through walls and they are immune to most forms of damage and only silver weapons or phantasmal blade can deal damage to them. During the daytime, they enter a dormant state and they stop glowing and eventually fade away. And that is all for me. I hope you learned something from this video to help you on your ice and fire adventures. If you have any other questions or want to add anything, make sure to comment down down below. If you enjoyed the guide or it helped you, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and peace peace.